Okay, these are the two properties that we've talked about so far in the previous videos. I failed to mention though that the first one, your theta has to be in radians also. So not only does this one have to be in radians in order for it to work, this first one also has to be in radians. So both the ones that involve these sine and cosine functions, theta must be in radians in order for these to work. We're going to apply both these properties to this particular one here. So for this one, we need to do some factoring first. On top we have a common factor of sine that repeats, so we can pull that one out. On the bottom we have a, a, a 3x squared that repeats. So we're going to do that top and bottom, we're going to pull that out. So on top we can pull out a sine x and we'll get 1 minus cosine 3x. On the bottom we can pull out a 3x squared and when we pull that one out we're going to get sine squared x plus cosine squared x. And so this right here should be something you should recognize from trig. Sine squared plus cosine squared, that's actually equal to 1. So again, this identity, this whole thing down there, that's going to turn into a 1 because of that special property. So here's what we're left with. Once we cancel that part out, you're going to be left with sine x over 3x squared. Uh, and then this will be a 1 as I mentioned before, that's identity there, and then you have 1 minus cosine 3x on top. Now, what I'm going to do next is in order to form each of these special uh, limits, I'm going to break up the, the 3x squared. Now, 3x squared I can write as x times 3x, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to rewrite the bottom. So, when I do that, I have the limit as x goes to 0. I'm going to write it this way, sine x over x, and then I'm going to do multiply by 1 minus cosine 3x over 3x. Why did I write 3x underneath here? Because i got to make sure that this k value matches so I can apply that special limit. So I put 3x underneath this one because now both of these are going to match. So I have sine x over x, and I have 1 minus cosine 3x over 3x. So now I actually have both these limits uh, appearing and so I can apply the limit for both of those separately. What's going to happen is this first one is going to be a 1. I can also apply the limit to the second one. I can technically break this up into a limit times a limit and when I take this one that's going to turn into a 0 which means that the whole entire problem limit's going to end up going to 0. Okay we're going to do one more that involves limits and trig. This one's going to require us to have to remember some identities from trig particularly the cotangent and cosecant, I want to write those in terms of sines and cosines. So I've got to apply identities to both of those. That's the first thing that we'll do. Okay, so for here, we're going to, I'm going to write the 9x squared as a fraction, just to make it easier, because the other ones are going to turn into fractions also. Cotangent, I'm going to write as cosine of x over sine x. And then cosecant is going to be 1 over sine of 3x. Okay, so now I have my three uh, fractions. Now, in order to, to use this property, which eventually is what I'll have to do, because if I try plugging in 0 right now, sine of 0 is 0. So that's why I, I need to do more with this, because plugging in the 0 as is, it's going to be undefined. So, um, I'm gonna, I want to try and create this if possible. So I need to get some kind of uh, fraction below each of these uh, in the end. So here's what we're going to do. In order for this one to work, I need to have a 3x below this one, and this is going to be an x. So, I'm going to take this, and I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 1 over 3x squared. Why am I choosing 3x squared? Okay, well, first of all, I can write 3x squared as x times 3x, and x will go underneath this one, and a 3x is going to go underneath this one. So that's why I'm choosing 3x squared. Now this was a 9 that's there, that's okay because I'll just end up with an extra 3 on top, that's fine. But the main thing is I need to get an x and a 3x underneath each of these. So if I multiply across the top by this, what will happen is a 9 and a 3 are going to cancel, the x squares are going to cancel as well, and here's what I'll be left with on top. Okay, so on top I'll have a 3, 9x squared divided by 3x squared is 3, then I'll have a cosine x, and there's a 1 there. So 3 cosine is all I'm going to end up with on the top. On the bottom, I'm going to end up with sine x times sine 3x 
and all that's going to be over uh, 3x squared. So I multiply across the top, I multiply across the bottom. All four of these things, you're going to get this is what it'll look like. As I mentioned before, you want to be able to, to uh, split these up. So that's what we'll do over here. We're going to do limit x approaches 0. We're going to do 3 cosine x over, I'm going to write it this way, sine of x over x, and then sine of 3x over 3x. Okay, so I'm splitting up the 3x squared into these two things. The limit rules say that we can apply the limit on the top and bottom separately. I'm going to go ahead and write all this out for you so you can actually see what exactly is happening. I'm going to apply the limit to the top. So I have a limit x goes to 0 of 3 cosine x. Then on the bottom, I have limits for each of these. Limit x goes to 0, sine x over x, and then times the limit x goes to 0 of sine 3x over 3x. So I apply a limit to everything, uh, top and bottom, and you are allowed to do that. Now I just have to find the limit of each of these things separately. Now the top one, I'm just going to simply put 0 in there for x. So on top I'm going to get 3 cosine of 0. On the bottom, these are both variations of, the, of this right here, sine of k theta over k theta. So on the bottom I get a 1, that limit goes to 1. This one, that's also going to go to a 1. Again, the same thing, it doesn't matter if you have um, constants on that, they're still going to go to 1 according to that principle. Cosine of 0, got to remember back with the unit circle, cosine of 0, the x value at 0 degrees, that's going to be 1. So I have on top 3 times 1, on the bottom 1 times 1 is 1. Your final answer is going to be 3.